Hey everybody, welcome back to Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff. We are going to make another... We aren't going to do that. Stop saying that. Stop saying we. I am going to make uh, another coffee table today and over the next couple of days. I got this old, uh, I think it's quarter sawn white oak tabletop that it was broken in half or I guess it's probably had a leaf in it at one point. Um, and I got it as part of a scrounge on Marketplace, Facebook Marketplace, for a whole whack of wood. And there was this uh, white oak tabletop thing. And I'm going to just kind of repurpose it into back into a table, put a little base on it. Relatively straightforward project, but I'm going to try a couple of new joints again. Well, at least one new joint again. I'm going to try bridle joints for the first time by making a base and cleaning up this tabletop that has been sitting out in the weather. It was uh, well worn before it got to me and then I left it sitting beside my house for a while. <laughs> so uh, yeah, use up some wood and get a little coffee table for the den. And it's not super important how it turns out because it's a coffee table for the den which is where my kid plays video games and Lego. We don't spend a lot of time in there. So we'll see how it turns out. Hopefully I can make it relatively nice. But uh, it's not that important. Hopefully I can just uh, resurface this tabletop and slap a base on it. Might have to do some more significant work on the top than I am expecting though. It's starting to split. So I might have to cut it apart and glue it back together. In which case I might just make a new tabletop too. Uh, Alright. New joint day. New, no. Coffee table day. Incorporating a new joint. Bridle joints. Angled bridle joints. <laughs> this is going to go badly. <laughs> so, here's what I'm starting with. Um, it's an old white oak, quarter sawn white oak tabletop um, that was in a batch of wood that I got off Marketplace. Um, and I could tell there was some beauty under there, but man, it was in rough, rough shape. These, uh, these joints that were opening up actually are held together with... Um, sliding dovetails at every joint so I wasn't that concerned about um, getting those I was actually gonna cut them open before I realized that and, and put them back together but I decided just to leave it um, and started in on resurfacing it was uh, a couple hours worth of sanding I'll tell you that much uh, I don't know what finish was on there but it was it was really on there um, and then we uh, joint the top the two sides of the top, I put it back together. Uh, decided to use some floating mortise and tenons just to help with uh, alignment, putting the table back together. So we just uh, start by drawing the locations for those on both parts and uh, get going with the router. Um, this is not for any additional strength or anything, it's literally just for alignment because I was concerned about how I was going to keep the two halves of a circular table together in a glue up so that was how I decided to uh, mitigate that complication um, yeah so glued it up after I got it all sanded down and uh, put it aside and started looking for wood for the uh, for the base I had an idea for the base uh, like I said in the intro there it's gonna do some angled bridle joints I was gonna do sort of two uh, assemblies and then half lap them together in an X, which is actually what I ended up doing, but we'll, we'll get into that complication uh, in a minute here. Start by chucking the uh, piece of Douglas fir through the planer. Here's me with my little template. I got a 15 inch by two and a half inch piece of paper cut out to draw my uh, leg assembly parts on this piece of wood, uh, which was my first mistake in making the base because I don't know if anybody out there knows math, uh, but if you take 15 inches and you put it on a 45 degree angle, it's not 15 inches anymore in terms of the height off the ground. So you'll see in a little while here how I had to uh, <laughs> adjust things in my plan uh, because I wanted it to be about 15 inches off the ground and yeah, I wasn't thinking. So here we just mill all the, uh, I guess leg parts, we'll call them leg parts because they're leg assemblies essentially. Mill them all down to uh, 
final width and thickness and length and all that good stuff. And then figure out how we're going to start uh, putting them together. This is, uh, yep, final length, 15-ish inches. Bad, bad mic. Uh, still <laughs> haven't figured out. This is great. It took me way too long to figure out that this was not going to work. Uh, then I cut the 45s on stuff, still not thinking that these are not going to be very tall if they're 15 inches long on a 45 degree angle. Uh, but I got all my pieces cut and uh, then I have to think about how I'm going to put these things together. Um, yeah, my brain hurt. Um, looking at these things these are the general form of the assemblies that I'm looking for and now I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna cut these joints it, on a table saw or in, like with a jig of some kind vertically or, uh, anyway yeah so this was frustrating that's I stared at these things for probably 20 minutes uh, but I got it figured out get the miter gauge out and started cutting the half laps. Oh, now I can't figure out how to cut the other side of the half lap. <laughs> uh, it's a, oh, wait. No, like this? No. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, and then I ran into the problem. Yeah, I had to wheel my table saw away from my outfeed table so that the miter gauge could ride all the way through it. In the, oh, this, yeah. It's not a pleasant... Oh, and here we go with the jig, and now I run into the problem that my table saw blade actually can't go high enough to cut the cheeks of the angled tenons so out comes the dado stack it's just one thing after another with this base man I like uh, yeah it's not uh, not a great day that one but I got it figured out we hog it away with the dado stack and uh, then I decided to cut the inside of the bridle joints just by hand which was not how I expected to have to do it, but it was actually kind of nice. I, it was my first hand cut, totally hand cut joinery. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute here. Transfer the uh, some more figuring to figure out how these things go together again. Uh, transfer the locations of where I need to remove for the inside of that bridle joint. And then, yeah, I took it over to the leg vise, put it up, and used my bad axe tenon saw. It's just it's my first time, actually my first time doing any cutting with that saw, and my first hand cut joinery, and uh, yeah, it's gonna take a while before I'm any good at that, but it was kind of fun. This, oh I need a new, if I'm gonna be doing this very often, I'm gonna need a new uh, coping saw or fret saw, or whatever that thing is, because it's garbage. And then I clean it out with the chisel, and it actually came together, like relatively cleanly. There's, it's gappy, obviously. It's my first hand cut joint, but you know, whatever. Shut up. It, it worked. And here's approximately where I figure out that man, that doesn't look very tall. Um, yeah, and sure enough, it wasn't very tall. It was, in fact, like nine inches or something. Uh, oh, I still haven't figured it out. Um, and pretty soon I figure out that nine inches is not a good height for a coffee table. <laughs> oh yeah, here we go. So now I'm like, okay, I'll just make some little risers for it. I, I was gonna, about to give up on the cross, the two assemblies with a half lap and do a sort of a riser block situation to get the tabletop high enough off the ground. And you'll see in a second here how I was thinking about doing that. Um, after I mill up this piece of Douglas fir to make these, I was going to cut them at 45 degree. Well, you'll see in a second. Uh, get them all planed up, ready to go. More work unnecessarily. And here we go. We're going to try to figure out how to raise the top table off the, maybe with like an angle thing. You know, that might be tall enough if I put those in like that, or, or maybe straight up and down. And, and I just was not digging it. There was nothing that I could do that I liked. The look of uh, so I went back to my original idea and I was like I'll just figure out a way to get the table up off it after I get it put together so back to the half lapping idea with the uh, leg assemblies just hogged out 
decide that I could get the table saw blade two, which would be the, what, the top of the bottom of the base? No, the bottom, whatever, the, the top side of the half lap, no, the bottom of the half lap in the top of that piece, or whatever, yeah, you get it. Uh, clean it up with chisel just to get a nice blue surface there, which actually was not that important because I decided to use epoxy for that blue up as well which fills any little gaps and stuff. I like epoxy to fill gaps because my joinery is gabby. Uh, and then this side, I couldn't obviously get the table saw blade to that, so I just used the bandsaw. Uh, cut a bunch of kerfs and knocked them out with a chisel. Bing, bing, there we go. Clean that up too. And it's, uh, I think this might have been my first half lap as well. And it came together okay. So like, you know, as frustrating and overcomplicated as I made this project, um, it, things turned out relatively okay as, as they were going along. Just had to fight through. Just don't get frustrated and down on yourself. Just fight through. Figure out a solution. Cut the little tabs off here, and uh, essentially you got the base all ready to go. Uh, except I don't think I've glued them together yet. Have I? No, obviously not. Uh, yeah, so then I decided to put dowels in. Well, I had already decided that those screws were getting replaced by dowels. Just as a decorative accent, it doesn't really do anything for strength at this point. That's an epoxied together half or a bridle joint. So, uh, but you know, why not make it look cool? Uh, screws don't make anything look cool, actually. No, that's not true. There are some things that look cool because of the screws in them, but this wouldn't have. So yeah, plug them with dowels. Um, yeah, get it glued up. You just wrap wrap some glue around the dowels and jam them home. Let them dry now. Oh, good. Yes. So I figured out that the top was actually too big for the space. The coffee table was going to be too large for the space I wanted to put it. So now what? Oh, okay. Well, let's make the tabletop smaller. So I had to build a trammel arm for my router to cut a circle out of the circular tabletop. Uh, first time doing this too. So, lots of firsts in this thing. It was like, as much of a piss off as this project was, I'm glad I did it because I did a lot of things for the first time and it was kind of cool. Uh, so if you don't know what a trammel arm is, it's essentially just a, a pivot point for your router to travel on. You'll see in a second when I'm using it. Uh, so I went 16 inches, I think. I wanted a 32 inch tabletop. So 16 inches and then yeah, you attach the middle and you just push the router around on your little trammel arm there and uh, cut almost all the way through it with the router. Uh, I just quarter inch uh, up cut spiral bit uh, all the way around until you're almost through and then you cut it out with the jigsaw and then uh, flush trim the uh, rest of it to the nicely cut piece like section of the side that you did with the router. So there we go, just put a pattern bit on there and clean up that last little bit that you did with the jigsaw. And it, it looks pretty small now, doesn't it? But it's the right size for the space. And get it all nice and sanded down. I rounded over the both edges as well. I think I did the top edge with a quarter inch radius and the bottom edge with half inch radius. Um, so that was just essentially final sanding happening on the top there. Uh, cut the nubbins off the dowels in my leg assembly. Take it over to my new uh, belt sander, oscillating belt sander thing that I just got. Actually, I got that while I was making this table. Um, it's a good investment in the shop, I think. You just flush up those uh, dowel bits and clean up the joints. Go over to the random orbit sander and get everything sanded up to, I want to say 220. Maybe not on the base, maybe 180 on the base, probably 240 on the top. Uh, here's the uh, the lift, the, the, the solution. Uh, the solution to the uh, this table is way too short problem. Uh, made, these are all, these is a three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood that I cut them, I cut pieces an inch bigger than each other. Does that make sense? So. Did four inch, a five inch, a six inch, a seven inch, I think, eight maybe, 
what did I do? Five or six pieces. And I just, uh, well, you'll see what it turns into. Um, I thought it might look neat, and I guess you might think that it did. It, I'm not, I'm still not sure, honestly. Uh, I've been living with this table now for a couple weeks and I'm still actually not sure whether or not I like the solution that I came up with to this problem but I don't know I'll let you guys decide and then I used some uh, walnut tinted Danish oil actually for the finish on this I had some left over from my trestle table my kitchen trestle table that I uh, did a while back and so I just decided to use that on this, hoping to pop some of this uh, this figure in this tabletop. And I don't know if it did or not. I think it looks all right. It looks significantly better than it did before, I'll tell you that much. And then uh, I just spray painted this sort of platformy cart because um, I kind of just didn't want, I wanted it to blend into the darkness under the table instead of looking at it. Uh, and then I just attached it to the base with some really long screws and then I attached the base to the underside of the top with some short screws uh, I don't think expansion contraction is gonna be a problem like seasonal expansion issues because I'm attaching the center like eight inches of this table there's lots of room for it to expand and contract around the outside of that anyway that's it that's it I guess there it is <laughs> All right, well, that is, th that's that thing. Uh, <laughs> I don't hate it. I don't love it. I don't hate it. I am glad that people drive by while I'm filming and they're loud. Uh, no, I'm glad that I had some firsts. I did this, my first reclaimed thing that I worked into a project. It's my first bridle joints. It's my first anything joint cut by hand, like without power tools, with just a, a handsaw and chisels. Um, I used up some wood that I've been trying to use up my wood, so I got a couple of chunks of wood used up. And uh, I used up even some old finish I had laying around. I got to use up some of that. So the end result, can't be called uninteresting. It's it. You definitely will look would look at it and say that is an interesting piece. <laughs> and it, uh, you know what? It, I'm happy. I guess with how it all came together, considering how frustrating I got during the process, the end result is something that I am okay with. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Maybe I might plan better for my next project instead of winging it. Um, but we'll see. I don't know. It's kind of part of the fun is just seeing what happens when you do stuff, right? Bye for now.